We continue our commemoration of KTTV's 70 years covering news in the Southland. As we look at the most colorful stories we've covered over the past 70 years, one of them has to be gangster Mickey Cohen. Fox 11's Hal Eisner digs into our film vault for a look back at this unlikely celebrity. I've always been decent and right, and I followed the uh, concept of uh, life as, uh, as a man should. Mickey Cohen, born in Brooklyn, raised in Boyle Heights, and on the wrong side of the law from the time he was 10. After Bugsy Siegel was killed, he'd become LA's mob boss. That was in 1947, just two years before KTTV and our many news broadcasts went on the air. Mickey was in scores of them. From 1949 until the day he died, Mickey Cohen was on our newscast many, many times and once told our Larry Atterbury. I don't really watch TV too much except for news programs like I catch you and uh, your lady that works with you. But way before that, our cameras caught the five foot five Cohen walking up and down courthouse hallways. He was always in some kind of trouble, but the law couldn't make anything stick. So the government went after his finances, just like they did with Cohen's idol, Al Capone. I am willing to save my country the expense of a trial and plead guilty. We were there when he was convicted twice in 1951 and again in 1961, both for tax evasion. When he wasn't behind bars, he loved the cameras. Newspaper photographers popping flash bulbs as he walked by. Television reporters popping questions. He was a guy who knew how to convert his everyday actions into front page stories. Pete Noyes, who retired from Fox 11 in 2008, tells me he remembers Cohen well. The media created Mickey Cohen. He was a darling of the media. They man. loved it. They loved it because everything he did was newsworthy. I just spit on a sidewalk and it'll be in the headline. He was a cocky little guy. And there were the women in Mickey's life who went in and out of our news coverage, like his girlfriend and exotic dancer Candy Barr. There was stripper and eventual B-movie actress Liz Renee who refused to testify against Cohen. She ended up spending a couple of years in prison herself. And after his divorce, there was fiance Sandy Hagen, almost three decades younger than Mickey. I'll work and I'll move up to San Francisco to be near him. They never married. There were always Mickey Cohen stories. We have over 25 years of them in our KTTV archives. Noise and others have suggested that Cohen created his own mythology, epic stories, and reporters hung on to his every word when he talked about the underworld. There's a guy in Alcatraz that forged his papers out of Alcatraz. There were many attempts on Cohen's life in many locations, even one at his popular clothing store on the Sunset Strip, another at his home in Brentwood. His every move was covered. My God, the media couldn't get enough. They covered him when he got himself a bulletproof car. Check out those incredibly thick windows. If bullets worried him, so did germs. He had this germ phobia, and he constantly was washing his hands. We even found in our archives footage of that. There came a point when he came out of prison that Cohen tried to rehabilitate his image. I am reformed. And actually, I had nothing to gain and all to lose. In the end, it wasn't bullets that killed him. He was seriously hurt in prison, pummeled with a pipe that left him in pretty rough shape. But stomach cancer is what finally took down Mickey Cohen at the age of 62. Our Channel 11 cameras were at Cohen's funeral service in 1976. They captured images of his casket being carried from a white hearse to his above-ground grave at Hillside Memorial Park in Culver City. And all of this in front of the cameras he loved in life. And all of this history, this film, we have in our KTTV archives. I think, historically, it's very important that these stories be kept on record. And decades later, we still have it here at KTTV. Hal Eisner, Fox 11 News.